Okay, everybody, we're getting ready to do our next inspection. And you're going to notice a few things that are a bit different than last time. I've got a couple new tools and my gloves are very different. And I'll explain to you what's going on with that as we go along for the video. One particularly interesting new uh, tool we're going to use is this little rack. It's going to let me bring you in easier and show you what's going on. So let's crack it open and bring you in. One viewer made a comment that said, don't just tip that lid over on its, on its top. Put it as a ramp at the front of the door so that all the bees know where to go back and they can climb back up. And that made perfect sense to me because that's exactly how they say in the book to install a new package of bees. So that's why we're going to do that differently. It seems to stand to reason to me that if I'm going to do that with the outer lid, I might as well do it with this lid too. Even though I'm not particularly fond of sticking my nose over this direction of the hive. Now this little rack, I'm going to just put right here, and I'll bring you guys in. One thing's clear to me, I will be learning an entirely new method of videography as we go and keep doing this because it's just extremely difficult for me to think about moving one thing and doing another and going back and forth. But again, we're just going to start with the uh, wall frame. And now here's what we're looking for. This is uh, week two, and the end of week two, and we're inspecting to see whether or not we've got a queen that's producing new brood, if the pattern looks good, and if they're building comb. So I've got these new gloves on. Uh, these ones, I don't know just how good they're going to do for sting protection, but man, is it easier to reach in here and grab stuff. So here's the wall frame. I can see a little bit of material on here, but they're not really building out any comb. So, just put that right here. Now, I like that a lot better. I don't have to put that on the floor. I like that. All right, so moving forward. Frame number two. Same thing, I can see a little bit of white on there. So it's almost like they're starting to put a little bit of comb on, but not much. There's just really not much there. So now frame two goes back in and close up against the wall here. Try not to squish anybody down below or on the sides. Trying. Okay. All right. Frame three. I can tell we've got some progress here on frame three. talking look at this we're starting to get some comb on the outside part of frame three so this is the furthest away that they're really starting to really show some comb away from the nuke that was put in here's the inside you got some good depth going into there there's already starting to be some moisture put into those and I'm just gonna keep saying moisture because I really can't tell I, I have to presume that it's honey but with the black backing that's used as a foundation on here, I really can't tell for sure. So I'm going to set this on the frame holder, bring you in to look at that. All right, so I think you can see that fairly well. You can start to see here that the, that the comb is starting to get a bit of a depth to it, you can see. And you might even be able to make out how there's a bit of moisture in that. So as compared to over here, That comb toward the center of the frame is very, very shallow. They've barely put any kind of their own foundation on the plastic foundation that's a part of the frame. So let's keep looking. It doesn't look like it if you're just standing around in the yard, but there's enough of a breeze that this smoke is very hard to direct. It's obvious to me right now why the book continues to say, on a warm, sunny day where there's no breeze, that breeze kind of makes you wonder whether or not any kind of smoke is really being effective. So here we are moving on into frame four. 
And we have got a more bustle of activity here, of course. It's much heavier. Okay, so this is what I'm calling the inside of frame four. And it certainly wasn't like this the last time I looked at it. Here we have comb built out. We have new honey that is brand new capped. And we know that it's honey because it's got this beautiful pearl white cap to it. And you can see the ladies down here steadily filling in the rest of this honeycomb with fresh honey. So one thing I've learned more about in the last week is, and I must have just skimmed over it reading the book, I don't need to be checking for the queen so much on here because the queen's going to be where the brood is. So I can save my time by going thumbs up for honey and moving on to frame five. Now this is where it starts to get a bit uncomfortable. This is where everybody's at. If I were a betting man, I would say somebody just tried to sting me. There was just a, a very authoritative thump, a company with a lot of buzzing right on my headgear. More and more honey. So here's a bit of a close-up for you on frame five. And I know the shade from a nearby tree is kind of impeding your ability to see it well, but you know, it's a bit of a tinge of brown to it, or almost like a yellowish brown. And I wonder if maybe the different color for the honey and the cap is because of the different, um, the different trees and flowers that are coming into bloom at different times. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, tulip poplar was in full bloom. Now we've got things like Chinese privet in full bloom, talking about the, the wildflowers around. So I wonder if that's got something to do with it, but clearly they are staying busy and doing a good job. We've probably got about easily two thirds of this frame, the inside of frame five capped off. So let's keep looking. Okay, everybody, this is the sixth frame and I cannot see what's going on very well. So I'm about to do something I have been scared to death of. And if I scream and yell, my promise to you is that I will at some time in the future, maybe on my deathbed, release that video to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shake this frame. And it makes no sense to me at all. Why in the world I take the time to start a smoker and gently and slowly approach the hive in a, in a, from the back and put in just enough smoke to, to stop the bees from being alarmed and then shake the frame. I don't get it. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to push this down and stop it suddenly and try to knock off a good portion of the bees so I can see exactly what's on here. Because a part of it looks like honey and a part of it looks like brood and I'm not experienced enough to know without getting all these bees out of my way to look. So, three, two, one. My goodness, that is scary. All right, well, good thing you don't know I have to change my shorts later. Oh, whoops. All right, so let me show you what I'm seeing here. This is the outside of the frame, and it looks to me like drone brood. Uh, the, the brood caps are sticking out a little bit and but not all of them so maybe I'm wrong. There's a couple that protrude out maybe a good eighth to a quarter of an inch more than the rest but not all of them. But yet it also I'm not seeing in the rest of this anything that looks like larva. It looks like honey or perhaps pollen. So am I wrong? Are these actually... I don't think I'm wrong, but what do I know? There's definitely a bee or something coming out right here. Can y'all see that? Well, I hope you can see that. I am going to watch this. Here's what I was trying to show you in the first video about supersedure cells. Uh, this is what I was calling supersedure cell because it looks a lot like the pictures in the book. But I wanted to show you where they were. Now I'm going to start putting up pictures of them so you can get a better look at them. And tell me what you think. 
they are basically in the very middle of the hive. They are on the right center, but not in the middle of the brood. So you're going to have to tell me what, what that really might or might not signify. Okay, everybody, I had to put you on pause because my card's about to fill up with the, I'm about to be out of memory, and I don't have the uh, luxury of closing this up just to go back inside and empty my card and come back out. But I have to tell you, I am concerned. In the video last week, I was able to see larva. And this week, I have been able to see births. My concern is that while I am seeing capped brood, I am not seeing larva, and that concerns me greatly. I have not been able to make out a queen because I have not been able to identify any particular brood pattern to where I felt like that's where I should be looking for her. So this is it. This is frame 10. and. Uh, this is one of the new frames. This didn't come with the nuke. And they're building comb on it. But that's it. There's, uh, looks like they're putting some kind of honey in it. But there's, this is certainly not anything that's going to have brood on it. So, the good news is I only have to panic for a day. Tomorrow, I'm going to a instructional course uh, a paid-for course at the Bee Association, and so I'll get to ask my questions there and panic with some experts that can pat me on the back or tell me what I need to be doing. Hey everybody, sorry to interrupt the program here, but yesterday we made a change, and it's relevant to this week's update, so I thought I would share it with you. We had Charlie, who's the president of our local beekeepers association, come out to our property. And I have to say on camera here, thank you very much for that, Charlie. We appreciate you driving all the way out here to, to visit with us. And Charlie took a look at the hive, and he does believe that we have lost our queen, and that there's probably a virgin queen in our hive, because we could find some cells that had been opened, some cells that looked like they had been, um, well, I should say he found a cell that looked like there was an emergence of a queen and cells that looked like they had been opened and probably killed by the succeeding, uh, succeeding queen. So his recommendation to us was that we were seeing brood cells where the brood was hatching and because a queen was not laying, they started using those brood cells as honey cells and he said why don't we try putting a, another deep on top and see if the queen will move up because now they were basically turning all of the bottom frames into honey frames and with that happening there was really not going to be any place for this new queen to start laying any eggs so we're putting a new deep on top with hopes that they will start building out the middle frames with comb so that the queen, when she's ready in a few more days, at least that's the best that we can expect, and start laying eggs on those frames. So, this happened on Saturday, and we are not going to come back until 10 days from now, probably next Tuesday. So we'll go back into here and examine it then and see where things stand. Also, I asked uh, Charlie for his honest opinion. I said, what do you think about where I put the hive? And he said, if it were him, he would have put it a little further out into the sun as a defense against small hive beetle. And I had heard that suggestion uh, from a couple people, including some close friends who keep bees and so I was kind of the tipping point where I decided that I needed to go ahead and do that and if you notice the shade line behind where the hive is now that is where the hive was last night 
and we move the hive forward about five feet and you can see where the bricks have been relocated out into the sun again tonight we will screen off the entrance and move them another five feet and while we're doing this i'm also slightly turning the hive i did have it facing southeast and now i'm going to face it just a little bit more to the east uh, even more so now it's going to be basically east southeast so anyway back to your normal regular programming so i am going to take a few seconds and go back to the frames that I think had cap brood on it and see what I'm really looking at. But I mean, I can't help but think more and more that something was wrong with the queen and that those really were queen supersedure cells. And the brood I saw was the last brood that she laid and now we're waiting for a new queen to mate, come back and, and put eggs in again, which means maybe I'll come back midweek and uh, do another inspection rather than wait to next week. We'll see, I'll ask those questions tomorrow, but uh, I'm gonna go back and take a look, and if there's any great new updates, I'll give you another video, but until then, I'll thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.